Hello, I am Father Ben. It is now noon central, and I invite you to stand, and we will begin by praying the Angelus. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. And the Word was made flesh. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that we, to whom the incarnation of Christ thy Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection. Through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for joining us on the radio or watching through the Relevant Radio app or online at relevantradio.com. Again, I am Father Ben, and I am happy to be able to celebrate this Holy Mass from the Chapel of the Nativity in Green Bay, Wisconsin. This Mass is especially helpful for the homebound and for those unable to attend a Mass in person today. For the care of your soul, we here at Relevant Radio strongly encourage the faithful to return to your parishes to attend Mass, especially on the Lord's Day for your Sunday obligation. Today we celebrate Wednesday of the first week of Lent. Remember your compassion, O Lord, and your merciful love, for they are from of old. Let not our enemies exult over us. Redeem us, O God of Israel, from all our distress. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison. Kyrie eleison. Let us pray. Look kindly, Lord, we pray, on the devotion of your people, that those who by self-denial are restrained in body may by the fruit of good works be renewed in mind. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jonah. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, set out for the great city of Nineveh, and announced to it the message that I will tell you. So Jonah made ready and went for Nineveh according to the Lord's bidding. Now, Nineveh was an enormously large city. It took three days to go through it. Jonah began his journey through the city and had gone but a single day's walk, announcing, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be destroyed. When the people of Nineveh believed God, they proclaimed a fast, and all of them, great and small, put on sackcloth. When the news reached the king of Nineveh, he rose from his throne, laid aside his robe, covered himself with sackcloth, and sat in the ashes. Then he had this proclaimed throughout Nineveh, by decree of the king and his nobles, neither man nor beast, neither cattle nor sheep, shall taste anything, they shall not eat, nor shall they drink water. Man and beast shall be covered with sackcloth, and call loudly to God. Every man shall turn from his evil way, and from the violence he has in hand. Who knows, God may relent and forgive, and withhold his blazing wrath, so that we shall not perish. When God saw by their actions how they turned from their evil way, 
he repented of the evil that he had threatened to do to them. He did not carry it out. The Word of the Lord. A heart contrite and humble, O God, you will not spurn. A heart contrite and humble, O God, you will not spurn. Have mercy on me, O God, in your goodness. In the greatness of your compassion, wipe out my offense. Thoroughly wash me from my guilt, and of my sin, cleanse me. A heart contrite and humbled, O God, you will not spurn. A clean heart create for me, O God. A steadfast spirit renew within me. Cast me not out from your presence, and your Holy Spirit take not from me. A heart contrite and humbled, O God, you will not spurn. For you are not pleased with sacrifices. Should I offer a burnt offering, you would not accept it. My sacrifice, O God, is a contrite spirit. A heart contrite and humbled, O God, you will not spurn. A heart contrite and humbled, O God, you will not spurn. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Even now, says the Lord, return to me with your whole heart, for I am gracious and merciful. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. While still more people gathered in the crowd, Jesus said to them, This generation is an evil generation. It seeks a sign, but no sign will be given it, except the sign of Jonah. Just as Jonah became a sign to the Ninevites, so will the Son of Man be to this generation. At the judgment, the Queen of the South will rise with the men of this generation, and she will condemn them, because she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And there is something greater than Solomon here. At the judgment, the men of Nineveh will arise with this generation and condemn it, because at the preaching of Jonah they repented, and there is something greater than Jonah here. The Gospel of the Lord. The sign of Jonah, what might that mean? Now, this has, of course, been unpacked by several scripture scholars, though I think it's quite simple. Jonah is known as a prophet who, um, perhaps the most uh, marvelous and crazy part of his story was being in the belly of a great fish. One of my professors reminded us every time the story of Jonah came up, it doesn't say whale, it says fish. Okay, well, I, I, okay, <laughs> it's a fish, it's a great fish, a whale, whatever that he was in the belly of this great fish for three days and he came back and then he went and preached repentance and then Nineveh responded most beautifully. Uh, what captures me, in, uh, really every time I read this passage from the prophet Jonah, something new captures my attention and today, um, although I did not share this with the elementary school students earlier today, what caught my attention was how really just on the first day, that Jonah was going through the city, word started to spread so quickly and it even reached the king without Jonah himself having to go all the way through the city. Uh, in fact, as soon as people started to hear it, remember it said it takes three days to get through the entire city. On the first day, Jonah preached, people responded, and they carried the word all the way back to the king, who also responded most beautifully. He called his people to a proper repentance, and what follows is, peace, that God stays his hand. He does not destroy Nineveh. Now, the beautiful parallel between Jonah and Jesus, and this is part of why that fish was used in the earliest uh, years of Christianity as a kind of secret way of indicating where Christian communities might be gathering. Um, Jesus was seen as a marvelous parallel, but a great divine fulfillment of the figure of Jonah, himself being in the earth for three days and then returning. Uh, this is the sign of Jonah that's being alluded to. And it also calls us to caution for ourselves, uh, especially when he says that this generation demands a sign. Uh, how many times have we demanded that God act a certain way or reveal something to us? 
Uh, we say, God, just give me a sign. Just give me a sign. Well, God has already provided, and it's also not for us to demand that he act a certain way or another. What our Lord tells us here in this gospel passage is that you will receive a sign. It may not be exactly what some of you are hoping for. And sure enough, at that time, many of them were hoping for a glorious confrontation of big, bad Rome that was oppressing everyone, the great and dramatic liberation of the Jewish people from their political overlords. But it didn't quite happen. What the calling of our Lord is, is to the sign that he has made ready and available for us. It's not for us to say, I expect this, I want to see this. So with both of these examples in mind, both you know the story of Jonah and then our blessed Lord himself as an example, uh, let's foster these within the depths of our hearts to give us a true repentance during this season of Lent. After all, repentance is the most core theme of this very season. Dear friends, I invite you to please rise as we will now present to our Heavenly Father these prayers of petition and intercession. We pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and all bishops and priests, and for an increase in holy vocations to the priesthood and religious life. We pray to the Lord. For all members of the Church during this Lenten season, that we are graced with a true knowledge of our sinfulness and humbly seek the loving mercy of Jesus, we pray to the Lord. For peace in the world and especially for an end to the conflict in Ukraine, we pray to the Lord. For those who work in the pro-life movement, especially for all those involved in 40 Days for Life, we pray to the Lord. For all those who have died, especially for the loved ones of those gathered here for Mass today, that they may rest in the peace of Christ, we pray to the Lord. For the intentions of Tim Heine in thanksgiving for his 10 years of service to Relevant Radio and for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. For our St. Joseph, St. Gabriel, St. Nicholas, and Guardian Angel Society members, and for all the intentions received from our listeners and supporters, that Our Lady of Guadalupe will intercede for them, we pray to the Lord. Good and gracious God, we ask you to hear these prayers and answer them according to your most holy will. Keep us close to your Son and help us to follow his example. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We offer to you, O Lord, what you have given to be dedicated to your name, that just as for our benefit you make these gifts a sacrament, so you may let them become for us an eternal remedy, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, 
always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you will that our self-denial should give you thanks, humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels, as with one voice of praise we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord, Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you, in thanksgiving, this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and David our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. All who take refuge in you shall be glad, O Lord, and ever cry out their joy, and you shall dwell among them. For those of you watching or listening, this is a good time to make a spiritual communion. I wish, my Lord, to receive you with the purity, humility, and devotion with which your Most Holy Mother received you, with the spirit and fervor of the saints.
Let us pray. O God, who never cease to nourish us by your sacrament, grant that the refreshment you give us through it may bring us unending life through Christ our Lord. Thank you for joining us for Mass here on Relevant Radio. I hope you will join us again tomorrow at noon central. Also be sure to join Father Rocky tonight at 7 p.m. central for the Family Rosary Across America. Coming up next, please join Kale Clark for The Faith Explained. The Lord be with you. Watch over your people, Lord, and in your kindness cleanse them from all sins. For if evil has no dominion over them, no trial can do them harm. Through Christ our Lord. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits, who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. My God, I believe, I adore, I hope, and I love you. I beg pardon for those who do not believe, nor adore, nor hope, nor love you. Most Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, I adore you profoundly. I offer you the most precious body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ, present in all the tabernacles of the world, in reparation for the outrages, sacrileges, and indifference by which he is offended. And through the infinite merits of the Sacred Heart of Jesus and the Immaculate Heart of Mary, I beg of you the conversion of sinners. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. With just a little time left, I invite you to turn to a Lenten classic, number 679. This one is most properly prayed on Good Friday, but there is nothing to inhibit us praying it here together. This is O Sacred Head Surrounded, number 679. O sacred head surrounded by crown of piercing thorn, O bleeding head so wounded, reviled and put to scorn, death's pallid hue comes o'er thee, the glow of life decays. Yet angel hosts adore thee and tremble as they gaze. I see thy strength and vigor all fading in the strife and death with cruel rigor bereaving thee of life. O agony and dying, O love to sinners free, Jesus all grace supplying, O oh, turn thy face on me. Welcome back for today's lessons. Let's see what more we can learn about the Mass today. As the priest is preparing for Mass, he prays these vesting prayers. The very first thing he does is he washes his hands, and he says silently, Give virtue, O Lord, to my hands, that every stain may be wiped away, that I may be enabled to serve you without defilement of mind or body. Then he takes the amos, places it on his head, wraps it around his neck, and he says, Place, O Lord, on my head the helmet of salvation. 
that I may overcome the assaults of the devil. The next thing he does is he puts on that long white robe. It's called the alb. And he says, purify me, O Lord, from all stains and cleanse my heart that washed in the blood of the lamb, I may enjoy the eternal delights. The next thing he does is he puts on that cincture, that white robe like a belt. Gird me, O Lord, with the cincture of purity and quench in my heart the fire of concupiscence, that's lust, that the virtue of continence and chastity may remain in me. A priest can't be pure and chaste unless humble and ask God for help. Then he puts the stole over his shoulders. Restore to me, O Lord, the state of immortality which was lost to me by my first parents, that was Adam and Eve, and although I am unworthy to approach your sacred mysteries, grant me eternal joy. Finally, he puts the chasuble over his shoulders as he says, O Lord, who said, my yoke is sweet and my burden is light, grant that I may carry it so as to obtain your grace. Amen. It's not mandatory for the priest to pray those prayers, but it really helps put them in the mood. You can pray them in English or you can pray them in Latin. I know them in both. After Mass, there's a couple of prayers that he can pray. I'm going to show you something very special, which I'll bet you've never seen before. You see this beautiful wooden case here, the, the millwork? Inside here, we have the sacred vestments that the priest uses when he celebrates Mass. So take a look at this. We have a white one for days of rejoicing, a purple vestment that's called a chasuble for Lent and Advent. Here we have a red one for Feast of a Martyr, or Pentecost Sunday. Here is a green chasuble and stole as well. This is the stole for ordinary days. And then we have some additional ones here. This one is a beautiful one for um, the Divine Mercy Sunday. Here's another one with a beautiful image of Our Lady on the front, Our Lady of Guadalupe. And here's one of Saint Joseph. Now what's so interesting about this closet, it squeaks a little bit, but that's okay is the size of those hangers. They're very large, they're custom made. And the reason why the hanger is so large is so that these vestments last a long time. They're made out of silk and satin and gold thread. And they're very expensive, they're very beautiful. And if you take care of them, they'll last over a hundred years if you hang them on something like this. Also in the closet, you can see there's a little mirror there. So when the priest vests, he makes sure that his vestments are um, put on properly and he doesn't look like a slob when he goes out for mass. So I thought I'd show that to you. And I have to credit the inspiration of this closet to St. Josemaria, the founder of Opus Dei. He said in our chapels and churches, we want the best for God, but only one of each item. He did you know, one for ordinary time and one for festival days. Inside this closet, we have uh, a number of vestments and the white ones, this is called an alb, A-L-B. In the early church, when you were baptized, you put on a white vestment. If you take your child to get baptized, they'll wear a white vestment. The nice thing about these vestments is they're made out of polyester and cotton, so they're pretty easy to maintain, and we clean them regularly. And there's different sizes for the different priests who come, because as you know, priests come in different shapes and different sizes. Also in the closet, we have a cope, C-O-P-E. That's a cape, right? And the cape is used for very special ceremonies like benediction of the Blessed Sacrament. And remember what Jesus said. He said, go out into the whole world and spread the good news. So if you liked what you learned today, please tell your friends about it. Because the more we teach the faith, the more we can bring people closer to Christ, and that'll be a great blessing for them. Welcome back for today's lesson.